So good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us for this unique event in an unprecedented time. Our hope with this education summit it, and the panels that we assembled is to let you hear from some of Team BCPS's bright and brightest minds about how they led, taught, planned, collaborated, supported, thought, and worked differently during this virtual environment. My message to all administrators and leaders in August was new day, new way. And this is the environment that we're in. Um, I will be providing an update about our initial plan later this week, so stay tuned for more information about that. But I'm excited about this panel and the experience and knowledge that each person brings tonight. So now let's get to our panel and hear from them about their transition to virtual learning. And again, thank you all for joining us. So I ask each of our panelists to introduce themselves. Good evening, Dr. Williams. My name is Rochelle Archelis. I am the principal, proud principal of Woodlawn Middle School. This is the start of my 24th year with Baltimore County Public Schools, and I'm the current BCPS Middle School Principal of the Year. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Christina Byers, and I am the community superintendent for the Central Zone. I am starting my 24th year in Baltimore County Public Schools, and I'm excited to be with all of you this evening. Thank you, Ms. Byers. Next. Hi, I'm yeah. Becky Fesser. I am um, your 2020 Paraeducator of the Year from Middleborough Elementary School. Um, this will be my fifth year as a paraeducator um, and my tenth year um, in the county overall. And I'm, I'm happy uh, to be here. I'm very pleased um, to, to have been invited. This is a great honor for me. Thank you. We're glad to have you. Welcome. Next. Kelly, you'll need to unmute. Good, good evening. I am Kelly O'Connell, proud principal at Mars Estates Elementary School. Um, also the principal of the year. This is my fifth year at Mars Estates, um, where our staff, our students, and our families really do the hard work to create such an amazing environment. Really honored to be a part of this panel this evening. We're glad to have you. Thank you. Next. Good evening, everyone. My name is George Roberts. I serve as community superintendent for East Zone Schools. I'm very fortunate and thankful to be here this evening with you. Thank you, Dr. Roberts. Good evening, everyone. My name is Raquel Jones, and I am the proud community superintendent of the West Zone. I am also very excited to be a part of this event. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jones. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Jessica Platt, and I am the school counselor at Glenmar Elementary School out in Middle River, Maryland. I was the 2019 School Counselor of the Year, which is a title that I am so very proud of. Um, I am happy to be here, and uh, hopefully um, we can all learn from one another tonight. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, my name is uh, Brian Powell. I'm the proud principal at Kenwood High School here in Essex in the East Zone. Uh, I'm very uh, appreciative and honored to be able to be a part of this uh, panel with everyone this evening. Uh, so good evening again to uh, Dr. Williams and all of our panel members and all of our BCPS community members. I'm looking very forward to engaging in this conversation and sharing all the, the great things that are happening uh, here at Kenwood, but also with uh, our entire BCPS community. So thank you all again and looking forward to speaking with you all. Thank you and welcome. And our moderator for this evening. Good evening, everyone. I am Lisa Williams, and I'm executive director in the Department of Equity and Cultural Proficiency. And it's certainly my pleasure to be with you moderating this very important discussion this evening. Um, 
The superintendent set the context well, right? We are in this moment that is unprecedented. Um, but what we know in doing equity work with the focus that we've had in our organization for the number of years that we had, that is that it is really important for us to recognize, honor, and in this moment, uplift all of the assets that our students, communities, families, staff, uh, and teachers, and just the collective, what they bring um, as we respond to these very, very challenging times. And so it's in that vein that we're gonna invite the panelists to share tonight around what their experiences have been and continue to be as we start this year virtually. So with that context, I'm now going to invite your thoughts, panelists. Okay, so question one, what are your hopes and aspirations for the year with students, with families, and the community? What are some of the challenges that you've faced, been faced with thus far, and how have you contended with them? I'll take that one. Thank you, Dr. Williams. <laughs> um, my hopes and aspirations are simply that our students and school community will come out better on the other side than how we went in. Um, I believe that when we go through challenges or adverse times in life, there's always a lesson to be learned. So what is the lesson as we go through this unprecedented time that we all could learn, teachers, students, administrators, community members, politicians, what is the lesson that we all can learn? Um, my hope is that through this pandemic, we would have learned maybe even new and innovative ways to teach and reach all of our students, not all students learn the same way. So maybe this is just a time for us to stop, think, and reflect on how we have traditionally thought about teaching and learning and maybe be able to reach some students that we have not been able to reach previously. Thank you. Uh, Rochelle, I want to just add on to what you were saying, because when Dr. Williams posed this question, um, I had a similar reflection in that my hope is truly that we see this difficult time as an opportunity to better serve our students, as you said, in unique ways that are more aligned to their needs. Um, one result of this pandemic, uh, specifically with the way it has disproportionately have been impacting people by race is that concept of uncertainty. Um, but our public schools have always been the center of our communities. And so my hope is that we're able to use this time to create and use new ways to support and uplift our communities um, and to academically reach our students. There are many challenges uh, that we are faced with right now. I know personally, one for me is the concept of remaining centered. And as a leader, um, I always try to help those around me remain centered as well, because really we need to remember that our focus through all of this and all of the challenges that we face really needs to be on our students, their families, and how we can best support them academically and support their social emotional well being. So thank you. I just wanted to add on because my reflection was similar to yours. Yes to centering. Love it. Love it. Jessica? I was just going to say that. I fully support everything that she just said. And just to add on to that, one of my hopes uh, as a mental health professional in the county is that we see this as an opportunity to build connection, even though we are apart from one another. And what I have already seen just in the few weeks that we've been back into the school year is uh, like such an enormous um, effort among our school community to, to um, connect with our students, to connect with our parents, to connect um, to the families in our community, even though we're apart via Google Meet, um, you know, through our back to school night, through school supply distribution, any way that we can see and connect to our families and keep them coming. And our kids are showing up every day. And so I feel like it's it's been, I'm, I'm so hopeful that we'll just continue to build upon that and maintain that sense of community, even though we can't be together in one school building. 
Thanks, Jessica. Brian? Yes, uh, absolutely. I definitely echo those those sentiments uh, from from my colleagues there. And um, just to just to kind of build upon that is in terms of hopes and uh, a, a big you know hope and aspiration is that we continue to focus on growth um, for our students. Um, no matter in this you know virtual setting, uh, we still want to focus on our students' goals, uh, their aspirations, uh, what they're striving for as they work through uh, their academic settings, uh, through their uh, sports uh, goals that they have and all the extracurricular activities that especially we have at the high school level. Uh, we just want to continue to be able to focus on growth uh, for our students, our families, uh, our teachers, uh, us as administrators. Uh, we, are, we are finding that we are all learning uh, many new strategies uh, and many innovative ways that we're able to connect uh, with our students and families uh, through this time. But as, as Rochelle uh, uh, echoed earlier, you know, this is a time that we're all learning together and going to be able to come out uh, on the other side, you know, better uh, in what we do. Um, and that's, uh, there are no doubt challenges that we've experienced, you know, through these uh, times. But one of the major things that continues to be at the focus is, is, is what our students need, what our teachers need, what our families need in the immediate. Um, and so we'd love to continue to hear that feedback from our students and families and teachers so we can continue to focus on putting those things uh, right at the forefront and making sure that we're providing those things and what, and what uh, our people need you know, right now. Uh, and that's really what we want to continue to focus on. Thank you, panelists. So I want to take a moment and summarize before we transition to the second question. So I heard that this moment has a lesson to teach us, right? It probably has a multitude of lessons to teach us. And so there's a call in to what are we willing to learn, right, from two of our uh, leaders. There's an opportunity for connectedness in greater ways, right? Um, a shared humanity in different and more complicated and complex ways. And then how do I stay centered as I do all of these things so that I can focus on the work that can be done because our students are showing up. Our families are still supporting the work. Our teachers, our leaders are still here, right? And so it harkens to that larger question of the fact that even in times of great cha uh, challenge, there are always gifts. And so thank you all for your generosity in response to question one. So now I wanna actually make a connection to this idea of community connections and the opportunities present in this moment. One of the things that we talked about is how generous our families are in allowing us into their homes, right? Um, we didn't, the family didn't necessarily sign up to have us in their, their homes in the ways that we are, but they've opened their doors by way of the virtual engagement that we're having with students. In what ways would you want to see and you hope to see um, that we collectively practice compassion and kindness given this differentiated level of engagement and contact and connection um, that the virtual environment creates. Whoever would like to go first, jump right in. Hi, this is Becky, Becky Whoa. Fesser. Um, so I think it's really important that we are coming in because we are coming into the communities um, you know, that we serve, we're coming into their houses, we're coming into their personal space. Um, and with the Google Meet, that allows us um, to see, to, to, to peer into their, to their life. We can see things happening you know, in their house. We can listen to things happening. Um, you know, kids aren't, um, they may not want us to be that personal with them. So the Google Meet will allow us, um, for the kids, they can have their cameras off, you know, and that's okay. Um, they can have their microphone off um, if, they, if they want to. Um, you know, there's the chat feature where they can talk to us, they can engage with us, with us in that way. So we're lucky to have that um, available and, and to be flexible with the ways that the children want to engage with us, how, how they are comfortable. Um, you know, it, it, engaging, engaging with us. And it's, it's really wonderful how they have shown up and the attendance that we do have. Um, everyone, the, the uh, community, parents, kids, they are engaged um, with this learning model. It is difficult. It is very difficult for everyone, but we, you know, we have to, we have to allow um, for the flexibility of how people um, feel comfortable sharing their personal space with us. And I think we've done a good job so far with that. Thanks, Becky. Sure. 
Yeah, so Becky, thank you for that, and I'm gonna I'm gonna build off of that a little bit. I, I Dr. Williams, Lisa Williams, I, I think what I hear in that question, how I interpret that, is really patience um, and seeking to understand. And what I mean by that is first, certainly patience. Um, I think to Becky's point, our teachers, our principals, our assistant principals, all of our staff um, have done a wonderful job in exhibiting that in terms of being patient with themselves and learning a whole new paradigm and, and, and way to teach, um, but also patience with our students, with our families, really as a community being patient with one another because we, we are learning this together. We are implementing things and creating um, systems that have never been created um, ever um, in our profession um, or that have been experienced by our parents or by our students. So I think when we talk about compassion, it's, it's learning with compassion it's teaching with compassion, it's leading with compassion. Um, and then I think to the latter point of seeking to understand, we're a beautifully and wonderfully diverse school system. So with that, that idea of as we're learning virtually and particularly coming into, as you mentioned, someone and our students' private homes and really both ways, right? Students are coming into our teachers' homes. Um, so I think there's opportunity there when you, you know, the patience is exhibited when you hear the dog barking, maybe as a, as a, a you know, kind of a silly example. Well, that could, certainly you don't hear that in a classroom, uh, but I think there's patience there and understand that in, when you're in someone's home, things may happen that may be a distraction um, for any of the participants. So seeking to understand that maybe you see some, you know, going to the diversity and maybe something's on a wall, a beautiful painting or a cultural expression is on the wall and, and, and you know, not judging, rushing to a judgment to say, you know, have that conversation and really learn to say, you know, that really interests me. Can you share a little bit more with the class about that? Because we are in your space and we want to respect that um, as educators, as community members um, within Baltimore County. So I think it's a wonderful question and I think it's something we're, we've been doing um, and certainly something that we're going to need to continue to do when we talk about um, learning and leading with compassion. Um, but certainly having patience for others and, and as importantly patience for ourselves as we work through this. Thanks, George. And for a minor break, just to let everybody in the viewing audience know, my son reserves the right to interrupt at any time. So if we need to take a commercial break, that is what has just transpired. <laughs> You'll so, need yeah. us to have some compassion and flexibility <laughs> for your little guy. Um, just to kind of build off of what um, was shared by George and Rebecca, um, it really is to me all about grace and understanding and flexibility. Um, and just like George said, that's for our, our staff, our educators, our teachers to really have grace for themselves. Um, our teachers have um, been learning so much and at such rapid speed, um, they're taking great risks. They're teaching in front of um, quite an audience, um, in front of um, all family members now. And um, they're willing to take these uh, great risks with technology and with instructional strategies. and. Um, the parents are, their whole lives have changed. Um, the students are learning and in a new environment, and um, we all have to really have grace for, for one another, uh, grace for the process of learning, of trying, of doing, of experimenting, a lot of trial and error. And um, really, I think that one thing that I heard today from teachers, I was in uh, grade level meetings with my staff all day, and one thing that one of the teachers said to me, um, this teacher has been teaching for 20 plus years, and she said, the connections I am making with my families are the best connections that I've ever made because they're in my home and I'm in their home and we're really getting to see each other on a whole nother level. Um, and there's this um, judgment that may have been um, before for, for all of us as humans, right? We have this level of um, preconceived notions and um, everything that's just removed right now. It, it's this lack of um, judgment. There's no judgment. This is, um, we're thankful that families are allowing us in. We're thankful that daycare centers are allowing us in. We're thankful that um, families are bringing us to their, their sites of work. Um, you know, we have some students that, that are working in the back of a kitchen in a restaurant. We have some students who are working in an office and in, in a conference room while a mom or dad are working. And it's really this, um, you know, appreciation for the work that our, our families are doing, that our kids are doing, and that our, our teachers are doing. Um, you know, we have to be flexible. Um, you know, typical rules that might be in a school that we really have to do away with probably when we go back to the schoolhouse. Um, I think that we're learning so many lessons. Um, if kids are hungry, let them eat. Um, let them have something to eat. Um, and, you know, there, there's no need to um, have such strict structures, I think, is something that we're learning in this process. 
Um, so grace and flexibility and understanding has, have surely helped us um, lead and teach and learn with compassion. Thanks, Kelly. Um, any other panelists want to respond? And so, Kelly, you actually said something that um, makes me think of another question that I'd like to offer. Um, but I want to recognize and uplift a few of the things that were shared, right? Um, and I heard us talking about centering our students. And I mean, I think about the world before um, this moment um, and, and how even in the challenges that we face, right, we get that opportunity to think about what makes our students comfortable, to think about what makes our teachers comfortable. And through a finite, um, purposeful practice of grace and compassion, right, that we are making those kinds of adjustments for our community. I heard us talking about patience and seeking to understand and then be understood, right? Um, and having grace with ourselves because we all are in this moment where we've not been before. So being gentle so that I can be gentle with others. And then finally, this opportunity to rethink. And that's where I wanna pivot to the next question. So as we have this, this opportunity to, to rethink what education can look like, reimagine, one of the wonderings that I have is, what have you seen or experienced in terms of relationship building, right? Um, I have been so inspired by the kinds of conversations we are having now about the authenticity of relationships that we are finding ourselves in with students, families, and community. So what are your thoughts and what have your experiences been around the depth of relationships that you are finding being formed across the community? And how are you finding interdependence more pronounced as a way of business uh, for teaching and learning right now? So I'll go on mute and invite the panelists perspectives. Thank you, Dr. Williams, for that question. I think for me, what I have seen and been so amazed by is just that the authentic nature of Team BCPS, our students, their families, our teachers, principals, everyone that kind of contributes to just what we've had to do in this space, and that's make meaning of it, right? We, we, we have a harsh reality around some things that have changed for all of us, but I've seen relationships that, no, or things take place between staff and students and families that may not have been highlighted as much. Something simple like making sure a student has the right book or the right instructional material or gets exactly what they need, support logging on and as we stated before, just that compassion, that ability to be able to just be our true selves in this moment. We dealt with the pandemic and we're dealing with the pandemic, but we're also dealing with um, social unrest and injustice and um, racial tension and just so many things. And we've, we've tried our best to provide each other with those authentic spaces to be able to discuss things like health and disparities and the impact of COVID-19 on one race versus another. And what does it mean to have a hot spot in one part of the county and not in another? And what I have seen even just recently is even among our principals and our, and our teachers, whereas they're working together across grades, across um, subject areas to be able to problem solve and really provide their communities with real time authentic solutions to solve kind of these current day problems. So I've just been overly impressed by how we've given each other permission to laugh, to cry, to laugh again, all in the same space, and then really come back with no judgment, right? With no, no, um, no judgment or preconceived notions about who we are. And I just love the fact that as a staff, we've been able to rely on each other during these tough times where things have literally kind of blown our minds, but we've stepped back and then there for each other because we've given each other a chance to just express our authenticity in a safe space. Thanks, Raquel. No. Yes. Um, okay, go, oh, Brian. I'm sorry. Uh, no absolutely. Um, the, the, the 
really the the depth of the relationships that our that our teachers are working uh, to connect with our families and our students have been just incredible um, as we go through this this virtual space. And uh, I know it's created a, a an even deeper appreciation every time we as as teachers and educators get a chance to interact with our families uh, and our students. Uh, I'm I'm trying to think of any way I can. Uh, come up with a reason to do a drive-through, to pick up materials uh, or things like that to come through the school building so we can get a chance to see students and families and just to see smiles on our kids' faces and uh, to see to be able to interact with, with our uh, families and parents and even their siblings when they come with them to pick up materials. Um, even I find myself uh, you know, heading out to the cafeteria patio uh, just to, to be there for meal distribution as families come up and just trying to find any which ways that we can interact with our families uh, in, you know, in, a, in a safe manner. Um, and that's very important to us uh, as what we do as educators. I can't thank all of our educators enough and our teachers uh, around the county and especially at Kenwood with what we're doing to build those relationships with our students and our families. Uh, I also have to give a huge shout out to our students. Uh, I can count numerous times where I've, I've seen and heard students uh, checking in on their teachers. Um, our students have heard so much from our teachers and teachers checking on them. Uh, so many of our students are checking on our teachers, uh, making sure our teachers are okay. And I can't um, express enough gratitude for those for those items and thanking our students uh, for doing those things and thinking about uh, our teachers all as well while we're thinking about them. So just to, to see the, the, the extreme depth of the relationships that we are creating in this manner, and we just all can't wait for the opportunity potentially to, to see each other and interact uh, in the safest way possible moving forward from here. Um, and supporting each other uh, and all learning together through this. Thanks, Brian. And really too, just to piggyback off of what Brian said with um, the teaching staff supporting students and then the students coming in and checking in on teaching staff, I have seen um, so much community and unity among just the staff in general, lifting each other up, supporting each other, making sure they have what they need so that they can be uh, best able to serve and teach their students on a daily basis. And, you know, with every crisis comes an opportunity um, to uplift and to come together and to unify. And that is what I've seen at my school and the surrounding schools in our community. Um, teachers working to support students in other grade levels, um, stopping what they're doing in the middle of the day to have, you know, 45 minute one on one step by step instructions on how to access Google Meet and how to toggle back and forth between asynchronous and synchronous and these things that just take up time, but that are so important and critical to be able to make um, distance learning work and make it effective for each and every student um, to be sure that each and every student has um, equal access to the material and to the curriculum, just doing whatever they can, thinking creatively to problem solve and get all kids connected um, to, to their classes every day and to their content up on Schoology um, and making sure that the parents have that access and open channels of communication to the teachers as well. Um, it's just been, a, it has been an opportunity for the, community to unify and that's what I've seen. Thanks, Jessica. Becky? So I'm just thinking about um, the interdependence of even um, different departments within our team. I mean, truly we are we are team BCPS and that that team um, mindset is really has really grown. Um, I am very grateful that we are continuing to feed our kids, um, you know, with with 80, 90 meal sites um, available throughout the county for our kids. I mean, that is absolutely imperative that they that they are getting the nutrition that they need. And I've seen, um, you know, a relationship built between, um, you know, the Department of Transportation um, and Food and Nutrition where um, the school buses are delivering um, the meals, um, you know, the meals that are given th three days a week um, t into the communities. Um, you know, they are accessible to the parents, they're accessible to the families. And I'm going to say that we get a gold star, <laughs> absolutely, for, 
for having that available because that is that is definitely that is huge. Um, and you know we're all in this together, and even our departments within BCPS, I, I can see, um, you know, we're helping each other and building our team even stronger. Thanks. Thank you. Um, we are certainly living in a very connected, interconnected world, and this moment certainly gives us an opportunity to think about some of those things that maybe you know were complaints in the old world, but they are opportunities now. As much as we talk talked about silos, and then now how we are relying and depending on one another to include internally and externally, just really helps to kind of push us into this direction that I'd like to um, proffer for your consideration. So in times of great challenge, we are always gifted with a myriad of opportunities. Um, one of them is for the best in and of our humanity to show up. And so here's my wondering, as you think about the humanism of this moment, and what ways have you experienced Team BCPS rising to that occasion to serve its surrounding population? Hi there. Um, I could take this one. Um, what I am kind of uh, thinking about is this the state of uncertainty um, where our teachers are not um, sure when they're exactly coming back. Our kids aren't exactly sure when we're coming back. We're not sure um, when a vaccine is going to be available. Just uh, globally, there's just so much uncertainty. So on a global level, um, you know, so much is unknown. And then you bring it down to our community level with of course, there's some unknowns. Even with the unknowns, our teachers are still um, keeping uh, the positive at the forefront. They're still keeping their work about children. Um, they are still finding so much joy in every day, uh, being with their kids and the teaching and the learning and um, the text messages that I receive from teachers and the pictures that I receive from teachers. Um, Can you come in, drop into my meet? You're gonna love what you see. And um, they're just so proud of the work that they're doing. I'm certainly super proud of them as well. Um, but the kids and the teachers and the staff are, are just, um, regardless of what's happening uh, around us, they are just um, doing the, the work uh, that's important, which is teaching and learning and um, building community. And um, it's really, you know, when I think about the best of humanity, it really is um, being aware of what's happening around us but also thinking of the positive and thinking about what we can control and um, what my teachers can control right now is a really good instruction and providing this really safe environment. And um, we're doing that. And, and um, our families and our, our students and our teachers are all working together. So um, for me, that's really what the best of humanity looks like right now. Thank you. Yeah. Michelle? One word comes to mind and um, thinking about this question, and that's just resiliency. How resilient Team BCPS, the school community, has really been throughout all of this. All of us are going through various things. Everything that's happening in the world has uh, impacted us in various ways. But it was almost like once it was decided that we would be virtual, it was a collective let's do this attitude. That's the best way I can describe it. Like everybody just rolled up their sleeves and said, let's get to work to make this work for our students. And I think um, it just sort of showed the best of who we are because in hard times, are we able to come together? And I would say, yes, we have come together. Um, parents at home said, okay, well, let me make this area in my house available to my student. Let me get a desk or let me get a trifold and, and, and section off an area. Um, they were contacting us. They were coming through. They were patient during device distribution and material distribution. They came with smiles on their faces as some of the panelists already um, alluded to in some of the previous answers. And they were just ready to work together and say, let's just make this happen for our students. We can't do anything about the pandemic. Uh, we can't change that at this moment. So what do we do in this moment? How do we make it happen for our students? So I just love the fact that we've been able to come together um, in such a magnificent way. To me, it demonstrated the true meaning of school community. 
So two things. I want to cue the audience to start sending us questions because we're going to make some time for question and answer. And then I just want to acknowledge that let's get to work to make this work. I'm going to give you credit for it, but I'm putting that up on one of my poster board. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> That's great. So the only thing that I would want to add to what's already been said um, is that for me, the best of humanity for me always shows up in our students. Um, it's just, it, it's why I do what I do. And I just want to acknowledge that this time, although challenging and different, um, has been no different in the way I observe our students. I'm still seeing in them the best of humanity. Um, they amaze me. They have found ways to stay connected and supportive of one another. Um, our student leaders in our school system, our student member of the board, our Baltimore County student council members, they are working and advocating for, the, for their peers in these difficult times. Um, they're providing forums for students to be able to talk to other students, to get answers in real authentic ways, in ways that um, matter to them, which I think is so important. I've, uh, when I've been visiting classrooms, I've had an opportunity to see students partnering with other students as they're working through challenges in classes. They're talking about their virtual study groups that they've set up to support one another. Um, but even with our youngest learners, I've uh, been in classes where I'll hear our youngest learners use language of encouragement with their peers while they're persevering. And they're saying, you've got this. Or one of my favorites today was a, a student telling another student, I like the way you explained your thinking. So again, I just wanted to highlight that one thing that hasn't changed with all of the challenges we've been confronted with is the humanity of our students. It's ever present, um, and I wanted to elevate that tonight. Thanks, Christina. So, so what I would add, and really the only thing I would add to Christina's yeah. comments, really is that that extension of our school system community. So, we're talking about our business community, our our um, partnership with our county government, with our local businesses, with the local uh, nonprofit foundation. So, examples. You know, look at our education foundation led by Debbie Phelps and all the work they've done through um, through their exchange reads and supportive teachers, but also um, in bringing together our business communities, our chambers of commerce to provide, um, whether it be meals or clothing or hotspots to students in need or families in need. Um, those are tangible things that all of our partners have done. We've served well over a million um, meals to our community over the continuity of winter since March 13th. And, and that's a monumental effort and, and huge thanks to our to our staff and food services and business services for all that they've done to, to get that stood up and organized. But as well, um, we look at some of the non-tangible things. So the school system has um, hotlines available. So we know this is certainly not only a, a stress um, fiscally and tangibly for our community members, but also for emotionally, um, potentially psycho psycho uh, psycho psych psychological, excuse me, psychological impact on our community. So the school system has stood up opportunities for kids and families to call just if you need someone to talk to through this. So it really has been a community effort and a partnership with the school system and the community. So, um, so I just wanted to offer that as well. I know those are some of the questions that were posed from the community. Thank you, George. Dr. Williams? So um, I have questions for our panel. I know we're going to take some questions from those who are watching. So I wanted to kind of start off a little bit because um, I want to hear from all of you. And they're easy questions, so I'm not putting you on the spot. So it's, it's just really from your perspective because it's important to hear from the staff. And we'll do this again, Dr. Lisa Williams, you know, there's, there's some students we want to bring on board and there's some teachers. Um, so to the panel, um, just curious, like um, what's the one thing that you've learned yourself during this whole virtual learning? For me, I'll give you an example. This phone here is something called Instagram that uh, I really had to learn how to navigate that. So just, just real quick, 
panel members, what one thing that you learned during this virtual learning or during this pandemic that we've experienced since March 16th? All right, so Brian, then Kelly, one thing. So one thing, one thing for uh, for me is uh, to kind of piggyback on the technology aspect. Uh, we have some uh, kind of some tendencies and some traditions here at Kenwood with our morning announcements uh, and the way we do those and some sayings that we have. But uh, I had to find myself quickly learning uh, how to how to operate a YouTube channel. Um, I never would have thought I would have a YouTube channel um, in my in my career, but uh, we have one up and running for our morning announcements on a daily basis. Uh, and so that is that is one thing that uh, I've learned there for uh, navigating YouTube and having a channel to uh, to continue with our traditions. And we can all go back and watch all of your YouTube. Absolutely, messages. It is a love it. Public, <laughs> <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> So one thing that I learned is I already knew that I love being a principal. Um, I learned that I would not like to be a tech support um, personnel in my next life. Um, I have really enjoyed helping, but I really love being a principal. So I'm glad I didn't choose that career. Um, and my hats are off to all those folks who did choose that career um, because the tech support and the tech help um, ha has been you know, a lot. Um, I, I appreciate my AP and all that she's been providing um, the support with that. Um, but in all seriousness, um, just really a huge lesson it learned is that um, I always felt like we were one team um, in, in our school and, and now it's really, it's so evident and it's really cool. Thanks, Kelly. I think we see Becky and then uh, Jessica. So Dr. Williams, this is, this is, a, this is an important question because I think before the pandemic, I was the last person on earth who did not have a cell phone. <laughs> I, 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 this pandemic made me break down and get a cell phone because my home Wi-Fi kept dropping the kids. And, and we, you know, we would be on the Google Meet for a while and then it would drop them. And I, and I thought, you know what, I've got to get something better. So I, I got a cell phone, I got the iPhone, I'm using the hotspot and everything's running well. <laughs> so I'm now on the grid. <laughs> Wonderful. I hope it's not a flip phone. I hope it's... <laughs> no, my husband would not allow me to get a flip phone. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Becky. I appreciate that. Jessica, and then Rochelle. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Um, something as a school counselor that I preach all the time to my students and my peers at my school is self-care. Um, and it's one thing to talk about it, but it's another thing to do it. And something I've learned um, since the middle of March when we've been stuck inside um, is the importance of taking care of oneself. Um, physically, emotionally, mentally, um, I've had to really dial back and kind of center myself um, and, you know, get myself right so that I can perform to the best of my ability and serve my students and really um, lead, you know, be wake up happy and have an optimistic outlook every day. And that takes work um, when you're stuck inside every day and there's all of this negativity in the news all the time, and it just seems like Absolutely. one bad thing happening after another, it's really important to just um, to affirm and nurture and set boundaries so that you can protect yourself and um, put your best foot forward um, for you and, and everybody in your circle. Absolutely, and I'm gonna show you this, you know, this is very important to the community. Make sure you drink enough water, Yes. enough water. <laughs> You're not lying. I am told all the time I need to drink more water. So, yeah. yes, I second that. Drink lots of water. Stay <laughs> hydrated. <laughs> thank you. Rochelle. Um, thank you, Dr. Williams. I'm along the line of what Jessica just said. Um, one of the things that I learned is it's okay to take a moment to step away and just take care of yourself and just have a moment for you. I think I actually may be still learning that because anyone that knows me knows that I work, work, work all the time because I want to get things right for my students. And so I'm often told, Rochelle, okay, you have to step away. But during this 
pandemic, I really learned that because the first part of it, I don't think I did a good job and I did not set those boundaries. And so I found myself, oh, I can answer that one more email, like working from 7 a.m. to 1 a.m. And yes. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, just one more because you are not leaving work. Like when you leave the school building, you sort of have that on off, even if you do answer emails that come to your phone, but being at home, that was different. It was no leaving work, so to speak. Right. And so I had to really learn to set those boundaries for myself because I said, I'm not gonna be any good to anybody if I'm totally burnt out and very tired. And so um, that was a lesson for me that I am still learning. So those of you that know me, hold me accountable to make sure that I am taking time for myself. <laughs> We're gonna email you um throughout the week and just say, uh, so did you shut it down at a decent hour? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, oh, I know we have our community superintendents. Anything that you would like to say in terms of what one thing that you learned? And then I have one more question for our panel and then I know Dr. Lisa Williams would want to get some questions from those who are watching. So what have you all learned? So, so I see my, my, my red box around my face. So I'll go first. So Dr. Williams, uh, from the technological standpoint, um, Google Voice has been something mm. I, I heard of um, previously, but certainly um, from working from home um, and needing to continue with, with working and meeting and so forth. So Google Voice has been my tech um, curve over these past uh, six months. Thank you, George. Raquel? Thank you, Dr. Williams. I have learned um, I have learned a lot about the importance of just you know electronic forms and the completion of those forms and being able to support um, principals in that area. I do want to add on that I think from a professional standpoint, I have learned I have learned to trust my team and to really know that um, not only the West Zone leadership team and the Division of School Support and Achievement but really trust the principals and the teachers to do what's best for their students and families. And anytime I visit a school, I see that in action. So I've just learned to kind of trust the process and trust that um, our teachers and our staff are doing what's best for students. Thank you. Thank you. Christina. You're mute. Sorry about that. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Um, the only thing I would add, and for people who know me, they'll understand this, is what I have absolutely, I've had to learn as, uh, professionally, but then personally as a mom, is to slow down, <laughs> uh, to be patient, uh, take some deep breaths every once in a while, and to Raquel's point, trust that it's all gonna be okay. Um, I have a tendency to have one speed, it's a fast speed, um, and you can't always do that in this environment. And so I definitely have learned, slow down, be patient, breathe, and it's gonna be okay. <laughs> slow down. <laughs> See? <laughs> All right, back to the panel again. Because we have folks watching, and they may be parents, staff, uh, students, what advice would you give to our audience? Whether it's a parent, advice to any of our parents, advice to any of our teachers, advice or staff, advice to any of our uh, students. So I'm gonna I'm whip around again. What advice would you give? And keep it short because I wanna make sure we get to these questions, but um, let's just start with, ah, Becky, she's up there. Hi, um, I'm gonna say reach out. Please reach out. If you are having trouble, if you are a parent and you don't understand um, something, if you are a student and you don't understand something, if you are a staff member and there's something that's really, really getting to you, seek the help because people are, have opened themselves up to, to helping you. There's no, there's no dumb question, as you say, <laughs> you That's know, right. there's no question, there's no question too small. And we are there for you. We are there for you. Absolutely ask and, and Love seek it. out what you need. Love it. 
that Jessica and then Brian, good. Yes, I would, um, I agree with what Becky said. And then my advice would for the teachers is just keep doing what you're doing. Um, I was in a third grade class meeting just earlier this week and we were doing a social emotional check-in and one student shared that she was feeling super duper amazing. And when asked why she felt super duper amazing, she said, and I quote, I, I even wrote it down because it was so sweet. She said, I am feeling super duper amazing because I am part of this school family. So oh, wonderful. It just, it makes my heart beat fast just thinking about it now and I get like choked up and emotional about it because it's not only that she feels part of the school community, but she feels part of the school community when sometimes it feels like our community is so dispersed right now with distance learning. So for her to feel that and to genuinely and candidly share that with her class and be so vulnerable like that was was really special. So teachers, keep doing what you're doing. What you're doing. Teachers, your teachers are your teachers. Your students are noticing, and they show up every day to be with their classmates and to be with you. Um, so just you know, keep pushing through because you know they they need you. And absolutely, need you. absolutely, love it, Brian. Um, I would say that my advice would be is just continue to set goals, uh, whether they be daily goals, weekly goals, monthly goals. Uh, just encourage uh, everyone to continue to set those goals if there are challenges. Uh, that pop up uh, while we're reaching and striving for those goals. Continue to persevere, uh, reach out, get support, ask for support. Um, even if you you know, you know see me in Gershbecks and walking around, please stop me. I'll be glad to, to help um, in, in, in any way. But uh, that's the biggest thing, our biggest advice, is we want to continue to grow together through this. And I just encourage everyone to continue to set goals uh, for themselves, whether they're academic, uh, personal, uh, professional, whatever the case may be, just continue to set goals and, and work towards them. I appreciate that. Setting goals. Kelly? And um, just to kind of piggyback on that, I would also uh, just remind everyone to give yourself grace, um, have patience, um, know that we are all doing our best and, and just continue to, to do your best and um, reach out when, when you need something, when you're feeling um, a struggle, when you just need to vent or talk, just give us a call. Um, we, we are here for you and um, we've got this. Uh, together we, we can do it and we will. Thank you. And together we will. We got this. Love it. So mine, Dr. Williams, would be um, dovetailing off of Kelly's, um, stay compassionate, um, remain compassionate, again, for yourself and for others, and also stay flexible. Things are changing. Everything's changing on the minute, on the, on the daily. So certainly that flexibility as a, as a characteristics um, is certainly going to be um, well worth it, as, as, certainly as we continue to move forward. Flexibility is important. Thank you, George. Rochelle. I would say just continue to believe that things are going to work out the way they are supposed to. Even when things look dim and you don't know how it's going to end up, that just continue to believe that things will work out uh, for you and your family. And just know that we are here for all of our families. So as Becky said earlier, just reach out and let us know. I'm still maybe one of the last believers that 2020 has something good to offer. A lot of people say, throw 2020 away. I am not going to say that. I am going to speak positively and believe Absolutely. that 2020 is still going to produce something great. Okay. And so that is my belief. And I would say joining with me and just believing that the best is yet to come. I'm right there with you. <laughs> We're optimistic. And we got two more, Christina and then Raquel. And then I'm gonna turn it back over to Dr. Williams, Lisa Williams. Okay, so my advice would be to trust yourself and those around you. Um, I think sometimes times of uncertainty cause us to doubt ourselves, right? We doubt what we're doing, we doubt our decision-making, um, whether it's as a professional or as a student or as a parent. And so my advice is to don't let uncertainty breed doubt within yourself. Trust yourself and trust those around you. Absolutely, trust yourself and those around you. Yeah. Thank you. And so just very quickly, I absolutely agree with all that was said in terms of advice. I think the last bit of advice that I would add on to that is stay healthy and stay focused 
Do not let the distractions and the stressors around all of us kind of keep you from maintaining your health. Your children need you, parents and guardians, principals, your teachers need you, teachers, the students need you, and we at Central Office need all of you. Stay healthy, stay well, take care of yourself would be my advice. Love it. We need you. We need all of you. I appreciate that. So Dr. Lisa Williams, I inserted myself. I used some time, but I just had to ask the panel members some questions. Just what we bring, what they bring uh, to this forum. And you know, I have some ideas mm -hmm. about some next steps, but I want to turn it back over to you because there may be some questions. I'm not sure. Uh, sir, we are at time. <laughs> <laughs> So we can codify the questions and absolutely create a format for some response, but I want to be mindful that we are at six o'clock. So we'll well, let me go ahead. Let me say this. So I see a continuation of this. You know, we have our teachers that we want to invite. And so we're going to think about what that might look like. And definitely our students, our students, our student leaders. Um, working with our student member of the board. So we, we're going to have some next steps. Um, but I just want to thank everyone on the panel for being here. And of course, our moderator, Dr. Lisa Williams. Uh, it was an idea of bringing um, a collective group of individuals. As you see, we have our uh, support professional, we have our counselor, we have our administrators, we have our center office to come together and just talk about some of the hopes and challenges. Um, but I wanted them to really give that advice to our community. Um, and I appreciate each and every word that they said. And we just have to be flexible. There's a lot of unknown. We have to stay together. I like to say sometimes we have to keep the noise away and just stay focused, stay healthy, trust yourself, ask questions questions, reach out to your school uh, leadership, to the teachers, give yourself grace. I love that comment. We're going to get some things on the mark and some things we, we may not. And so as a collective unity, we come together and problem solve. So I want to thank the panel for being here. I know um, it's been a long day, but I just appreciate your wisdom, your experience, and the fact that you all are a part of Team DCPS. And thanks, I want to say a, a big thank you for those who are watching. So uh, it's been great, and I appreciate all that you continually do for our students and our community. And I also want to thank our partners, our, our elected officials, our board members, all of those who are supporting these efforts uh, and what we do to make our system a better place for everyone who's a part of Team DCPS. So I want to thank you for your time and attention tonight.